Welcome to Electron Online. Now let's take a look at an example where we have a uniform distributed load. For example, there's a bridge section supported from the cables that are attached to the main cable right here that supports the whole structure. Assuming that the weight per unit length is uniform, and let's use W as the weight per unit length or the force uh, pulling down on the cable per unit length. The distance between A and B, the two support points in the horizontal direction is L. The distance between A and B in the vertical direction is considered D. And again, let's pick two points on the cable, the lowest point C and any other point on the cable D. And the distance between C and D in the horizontal direction is X. And since the load is uniformly distributed, we know that the net load or the resultant load on that section of the cable, we can call that large w, which is equal to the weight per unit length, multiplied times the length, or x. And we know that's going to be exactly in the middle because it's uniformly distributed. The load is uniformly distributed, which means that the distance from where the net load or the resultant load is acting on the cable will be x over 2 away from c and x over 2 away from d. We've taken that section of the cable and drawn a larger picture here. Notice again, we have T sub naught pulling in this direction, T pulling in this direction, and the resultant load pulling in this direction. Now, why do we always pick the point at the bottom of the cable? Because the only tension component we have there is the horizontal tension component, which is going to be equal to the horizontal component of the reactionary force at A and B. Remember that the tension in the X direction the component of the tension in the x direction is the same everywhere through the cable and equals the x components of the reactionary forces at A and at B. And therefore, since we can easily calculate what the reactionary forces are at A and B, we can then also easily calculate what T sub naught is on that section of the cable. So that becomes a reference point to us. And then we can calculate the tension anywhere else in the table, in the cable, I should say by knowing the length of the section and by knowing the angle. So we're going to need to know the angle at that point. So let's label that angle as angle theta. Again, what we're going to do here is we're going to draw a triangle of those three forces. Here we have W times X, the weight per unit length times the distance of X. We have the horizontal component of the tension, T sub naught. And then we have the tension in that cable section right here, T, and this is the angle theta between the horizontal and the direction of the cable at point D. Again, we can see here that the tension T can be calculated to be equal to the square of T sub naught plus omega times X quantity squared, and then take the whole thing when you add it together and take the square root. We also have a relationship between the angle and those two sides. We can say that the tangent of theta, by definition, is equal to the opposite side, the weight of that section on the cable, divided by T sub naught, the horizontal tension component in the cable. What we're going to do now is show why we say that this is a parabolic curve, that cable will be in a parabolic shape. Even if A and B are not at the same height, if they're different heights, it doesn't matter. This will still be parabolic. Let me try to show you why we can say that. How do we go about doing that? The way we're going to show that is we're going to pick point D right here on that section of cable. And we're going to draw the moments the way we're going to accomplish that is we're going to take the point at D and calculate the moment of all the forces acting at that point. Now, even though it's a cable and it's flexible, we can still do that. So we're going to sum up the moments about point D on the cable, and we know that that's going to have to equal zero. And let's see what those are. First of all, we have the tension of the cable at C, which gives us a clockwise moment about D, that's a negative tension there, or negative moment, negative T sub naught, multiplied times the distance. The distance from the line of action of the force to the pivot point. That's the distance right here. So let's, let's call that distance D1. 
So we'll call that distance D1. And then we have the load here. The load here would cause a counterclockwise moment, so that's a positive moment, so that's plus omega x. And the distance from the line of action of the force to the pivot point, that's this distance right here, but that's a known distance, we can call that x over 2. x over 2, like that. And we know that those two components added together will give me 0. Okay, now to solve this, what we can do, because we want a relationship between y and x, and we don't know what d1 is. d1 depends upon what position on the cable we let d be. So instead of calling this d1, let's call this the unknown variable y from our reference point, the lowest point on the cable. So what we're going to do here is assume that we're going to have a coordinate system here of a y-axis in the vertical direction, an x-axis in the horizontal direction, and the origin at point C. That makes this vertical distance here y, the unknown y. So we'll rewrite this equation as 0 equals minus t sub naught times y plus omega x times x over 2. And we're going to solve this equation for y, which means we bring this to the other side, divide both sides by t sub naught, which means we get y is equal to, well, we have omega divided by 2t sub naught times x times x, which gives us x squared. And this is the equation that we get when we do that, when we take the moment about any point on the cable that we take, in this case, point D there. And notice that this becomes, if we take a look at it, this now becomes, this actually is a quadratic equation. This is an equation in the form y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, but without the bx component, without the c component, just the ax squared component. The reason, of course, is because we chose our origin right here at point c. You can see then that the coefficient in front of the x squared term is omega divided by 2t sub naught. T sub naught is the horizontal component of the tension in the cable, which is constant throughout the whole cable. And omega is simply the weight per unit length of the load on the cable. And so therefore we know that regardless of where we put A and B, when we have a distributed load like this, which is uniform, we'll have a cable in a parabolic shape based upon this equation. And that's how we can analyze a uniform distributed load on a cable that has a uniform distributed load on it and therefore we can see that that indeed does have a parabolic equation.